Hey everyone, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome to another episode of MindBit. Well, hello everybody. I hope you are well. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my top 20 anime of all time. So I guess let's get started. Let's see what I got and make sure to leave some of your favorites down below in the comments section as well. So last week I ended things off with an uh, anime called Fooly Cooly, which is just balls to the walls outrageous, just so outrageous. And this week I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna start with something that's outrageous, yes, but also deals with the dark side of human nature. And it's gonna be a very, uh, this is gonna be kind of a themed video because there's gonna be a lot of instances of that in this list. So I'm gonna start things off with an anime called Gantz. You may or may not have heard of it. You might be more familiar with the manga rather than the anime. People do have their gripes about the anime in comparison. The manga is very different. It's very action-oriented. And it's about a group of people who supposedly die and are then transported to a very plain room with this ball called Gantz, and they're sent on missions, timed missions, mind you, where they need to kill aliens. Aliens from outer space it seems and if they don't kill them in time then they die once again so very interesting story and it seems pretty outrageous at first however it does definitely delve into the dark side of human nature and the dark side of just humanity itself and what people are willing to do to uh to have their way and uh it's very interesting just seeing the intricacies of the story and trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Obviously, the manga does delve into it a lot more, and it far surpasses the anime. However, there was something about the anime that I found very intriguing, and it was really nice to be able to see the animation uh, that ensued. Of course, when you're reading a manga, you can only get it to a certain extent. There's a lot of uh, imagination involved in something like that, since you're getting it frame by frame, right? But to be able to have this in an anime format, it worked really well, and sure, you did kind of have, you know, an Alien of the Week vibe here, but there was something so compelling about it, and it was just as compelling about learning who each character was, their background, why they are where they are now, why they're dead in the first place, and why they're going through these missions. There's a lot of thrill involved in it. And yes, while it was much slower paced in the anime than it is in the manga, there's something to really appreciate about that. That slow pace gave you time to really let everything sink in, and it's a very disturbing, very disturbing anime full of gratuitous violence, which I really enjoy and some people won't enjoy. You know, so this is not an anime I would highly recommend if you're not into extreme violence and extreme, like, it's just, there's a lot of bad things going on in this anime, and it is very mature for those reasons, but it's one that I had such a good time experiencing, and I had such a great time experiencing the manga as well. I found it to be a total treat, and still gave you a chance to really think about things, so I highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out already. Now, if we want to talk about intricacies in stories and other animes that are very intricate, are very compelling, that might seem very basic at first, but open up into something so much more, then I've got to mention one anime I wish never would have ended, and that anime is Cowboy Bebop. This is uh, similar in a way to Outlaw Star in that it involves uh, space adventurers, uh, space cowboys, uh, and there's something very basic about the idea. However, once you learn more about the intricacies of the plot and the intricacies of the characters themselves, you just kind of get sucked in. You get sucked into the world itself and, I mean, it's it doesn't help that the animation for it is amazing, for one. Amazing, absolutely. But the music. Yoko Kano did an amazing job of this soundtrack. Holy cow. Uh, even if you're not a fan of jazzy music, you are gonna love this because it works so well with the world itself. I, I think one of the things I enjoyed so much about this is the attention to detail in atmosphere, in story. In ways, you could say it did feel a little bit incomplete. You could have easily gone for 10 plus more episodes. Of course, we did get an anime uh, movie that happens somewhere in the middle of the series. And you could say that the end was a bit on the incomplete side in terms of telling the story uh, and 
expressing the dilemmas for each character and their personal dreams and aspirations but it was still really great and they all had their own distinct aspirations at that too and you really got to get to know them and in a very personal manner to a point where when it ended you just you didn't want it to end i did not want this series to end sometimes i would like it if they redid it but at the same time i don't know if you could actually grasp that same heart that the anime had offered and it's really no wonder that there are so many people out there who talk about this being one of the best anime of all time because it very much is a classic and it's one of the it's like one of the top tier animes for its kind not just because it's fun loving but because it has a lot of heart it, it there's so much work that went into this and there's so much work that goes into the character development and the story itself and the animation and the music and everything about it there's just something very special about this anime anime and it's uh it's it's no wonder it is where it is and why people hold it to such a high regard if you haven't oh i highly 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 recommend you check out this anime even if you're not into action adventure genre you i think you will love it you will love it and i think it caters to a lot of different people no matter who you are and yeah it's just it's wonderful it's wonderful and i'm sure you'll appreciate it just as much atmosphere can be a powerful thing, a very powerful thing, and sometimes it can create some of the most compelling anime you could imagine. Now, when I think about atmospheric anime, one that definitely comes to mind and one that absolutely fell under the radar, yet deserves so much more attention than it gets, is Shin Sakai Yori. Now you might remember I did a review of this anime, which I'll post up here somewhere, and I loved it. I loved it. It's not a very old anime, it just wasn't marketed properly, and it's something that I really wish would have gotten more attention. It actually just, the first part came out on Blu-ray as well, through uh, Shintai Filmworks. It's something else entirely. It's in a dystopian world where people have uh, developed psychic abilities, and how they are now living, and how they're able to survive. Like, the the population has gotten immensely small at this point to a point where humanity is almost extinct and the way that we see how people live their lives and the sacrifices that are made in order to help humanity it can be selfish it can be terrifying some of the things that they're so willing to do in order to save themselves. Now, of course, there's also a sense of oppression involved, too, because there's now these uh, rat people who have mutated, and the, the relationship between the humans and these rat people is insane, and just the origin of the rat people and the things that you learn about them and how they've come to be what they are now, it's very frightening. This is a very frightening series and it relies a lot on its atmosphere in order to keep its viewers entertained and keep them enthralled more so than anything. I don't know if I'd necessarily call this an entertaining anime because it is very disturbing in its portrayal of human nature, uh, but it's something that I highly, highly recommend any of you check out and I highly recommend you check out the review too because I feel like I, you know, right now I'm just kind of going off into my own emotional world expressing this to you, but I feel like I was able to better express that in the review as it's a bit more on the scripted side, right? So it's something that blew me away, and it's not often that you see a series, a new series like that, come out. Yeah, like I said, it deserves a lot more attention than it gets uh, for sheer atmosphere, for just the meaning behind everything that happens. There's meaning in everything. And it's uh, it's it's very disturbing, very real, though. And I think that's what makes it most disturbing, is how real it really is, and how it delves so much into the unknown. I really enjoy it, and I highly recommend you check it out. Now, if you're looking for more disturbing anime that deal with human nature, probably one of the top-tier directors I could ever ever recommend, and this is me cheating a little bit because this is going to be works by one person in particular who I highly, highly, highly respect, and that is Satoshi Kon, the late Satoshi Kon. I, uh, I love his works very much. If you're not familiar with the name, you might be more familiar with 
the anime he has created, such as Perfect Blue, Tokyo Godfathers, Paprika, Paranoia Agent, these are thrilling to the max. This is like psychological thriller, and it's a uh, there's something very disturbing, just like how in Shinsuke Yari, it it's very disturbing because it's very real. And what was wonderful about Satoshi Khan was that he was so willing to delve into human nature and he was so willing to delve into the into reality itself and find your dirtiest secrets and find your your deepest insecurities and put them out on stage. I really respect that and it's a very scary thing to do. It's a very vulnerable thing for him to do in the first place. Now, not all of his films not all of his works were that disturbing, such as Tokyo Godfathers. However, what was really great about each of his works was that he was able to depict a sense of human nature, whether that was good or bad. He very often covered the downfall of human nature, but also celebrating human, human nature too and human potential. Another reason why I respect him very much, because you probably already know, I'm very big into human potential and his characters are sometimes some of the most amazing and most memorable characters you will experience in anime. So I find this to be more of like a big thank you for all of his works and everything he has done. I highly recommend you check out this director. He did some really beautiful, disturbing, thrilling works that you need to see for yourself at least once. Certainly not for everybody. If you aren't comfortable with uh, with themes such as this, but it's something you need to see at least once because it is like kind of like looking in a mirror to an extent, right? It really makes you think uh, about these decisions you may or may not have made in life. It's uh, it covers a lot of very personal issues that can be unsettling but can be so so true. So there's something very cerebral about Satoshi Khan's works, something I really respect and I really love, and I love anime like this. I love anime that offer a sense of challenge, and that's why I'm going to end things off with an anime that I, once again, hold to a very high degree and why is part of my list, and that anime is Serial Experiments Lane starts off very simple and turns into something else completely very philosophical and, like I said, very cerebral, very deep. Now it focuses on a very quiet, unassuming junior high student named Lane, and she receives an email from a dead classmate who had committed suicide a week earlier. She answers that email and then she realizes that there's potentially another world or something else entirely that she is slowly becoming a part of. Now this is a very experimental sci-fi anime. This is not for the faint of heart. If you're looking for something lighthearted, it might not be for you. But if you're looking for a trip, if you're looking for something revolving around the human condition, something where it will will completely break reality and will keep you guessing at every single moment, you might really enjoy this a lot. It really challenges the idea of existence and it really challenges the idea of technology itself. I'm very interested and intrigued by technology and the idea of how it keeps us connected, however it separates us in so many ways and isolates us, right? It's very inclusive and exclusive at the same time, and Lane focuses a lot on those particular themes and the idea of technology to a philosophical sense. So it becomes a very surreal series. Now with all that, we have some very minimalist artwork, which works really well with it, really, really well with it actually, and it has some very minimalist music as well, very atmospheric music that works towards it, or just a lack of music. Sometimes the lack of music is the most disturbing part, 
and it works really well with the anime's experimental vibe. So a very quiet series, yet it has a lot of tension involved in it too, and it's something that becomes very apparent as you continue watching it. And as you start to see the direction that our main protagonist, Lane, starts falling into, and it becomes something else entirely. I, I love anime that give you that opportunity, that offer that sense of challenge that you wouldn't otherwise get. Something that can still be so surreal and so magical in its own way. It is total magic, total magic, and very creepy. And you know, it's a uh, if you're if you're looking for something that is very close to home, something that when it came out, in a way, was really ahead of its time. And there's a lot of really great sci-fi classics that I could put into this, uh, this boat as well. But Lane did something that I am so amazed to see, uh, considering the fact that where we are now in technology, it's almost creepy because it's almost as though it predicted what is going on now and how people are so connected, yet so isolated. I find that really intriguing. And of course, Japan has been a very uh, technology savvy country for a very long time now, so I'm not surprised that something like this came out of Japan. But wow, it's, uh, it's something else entirely. And I love how it kind of goes into a philosophical sense and how it really starts to explore something like it. I love it very much and kind of why I wanted to end things off with this as well. It's very near and dear to me, and if I were to actually have a number one anime of all time, I actually think this one just might be it. I actually think so. Now, mind you, nothing here is numbered. I don't think I could do that considering there's so many genres that I have to express, but I think that this might be it. So if you are curious what my number one anime is, it probably is Serial Experiments Lane. I highly recommend you check it out. I really hope you enjoyed 6 through 10 in my top 20 anime of all time. Part 2 was very fun and definitely focused on the darker side of anime, which is some of my favorite stuff actually. I love the psychological. I love psychology in general. I love exploring the human condition and seeing just, as, just how far people are willing to go. This was a very fun episode for a very different reason compared to part 1, and I highly recommend you check out part 1 to see what that one's all about too. So that means we are halfway now. So I hope you check out next week's video that's going to be happening next Friday, and then I'll have another one after that with my finale that's going to be the following Friday. I highly recommend you check it out if you are an anime fan, and please, if there's anything that you have to say, if there's any anime you'd like to share with me, please let me know. This is a list that I... I spent a lot of time on something that was very, very important for me. And there are anime that you will not see here, uh, but don't be discouraged by that. This is my list for that very reason, is I have my own opinions about anime, and I have my own opinions on what the best of the best are. And that's kind of why I want to know what yours are, because everyone's going to be a little bit different, and everyone's going to have different tastes, and have their own reasonings behind their loves and what they don't love, right? I love that a lot, and that's why I ask you guys. I want to communicate, you know? Communication is very important. Something I hold to a very high regard. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed, and please tune in again soon for another video. I'll see you later. Peace.